Well, hi, everybody. Kim Winter here from Logistics Executive Group. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes of your day today and joining us. Um, joined by uh, a guest today from the deep south of, uh, of the world, down in New Zealand. He is a New Zealander uh, and he, he is also a uh, first and foremost a Samoan man with a really, really interesting history, professional sportsman um, who's been all around the world and played rugby, borderline all black, played for Manu Samoa, uh, played for many professional clubs in the UK, France, New Zealand, um, and now an author. And uh, we've covered his book on a, on a separate interview, Tackle, um, about success uh, in life and business, and we'll hear a little bit about that. But without further ado, uh, an entrepreneur, uh, an author, a speaker, a leader, and uh, a modern a modern evangelist of, of leadership and development in New Zealand, uh, Filippo Levy. Talofa, uh, Filippo. Hey, it's Talofa, Kim. It's, uh, yeah, humble by those words, mate. Uh, it's great to be on your on this talk today and uh, you know and uh, tell people about my story of, of where I came from and some of the values I had and uh, where I am now in life great yeah great look I have followed your career over the years and uh, with, with great respect and and interest and you've uh, been an absolute globe trotter in terms of the professional sports and rugby but uh, look, I'd like to start with our guests giving us a bit of a brief on on their background and their childhood and the upbringing and where where you were and where you came from and how that shaped you and then let's talk a little bit more about what you're doing now and your and your leadership uh, business uh, being the entrepreneur that you are. So my um, journey started well pretty much my parents who left uh, Samoa in the 70s so they came here uh, pretty much me here married and then had us had us kids so I was born in, in Huntley which is down in Hamilton um, and and all the other siblings were born around uh, in Auckland and Kawaro. Um and uh, and that's pretty much when my journey started with my parents leaving the islands and then that time there were many Pacific Islanders who came to uh, Aotearoa New Zealand uh, for search of opportunity for you know for education for um, the economy uh, the enterprise and so my parents sort of uh, came for those reasons but not only that but they came back to serve their families back in Samoa. So that journey sort of had us living in Hamilton uh, at Huntley and then moving to Auckland when I was pretty much two or three years old, two years old. And then I stayed in Auckland till I was 10 years old. So we stayed in a suburb called Glen Ellis. And from 10 years old, my uh, father, he was working in the railways at the time uh, for about 14 years. So after 14 years of working for the New Zealand Railways, uh, he had a calling uh, to become a uh, become a minister and you know uh, for the... Uh, uh, the Presbyterian Church. So in his 40s, uh, they, my, my parents decided to move down to Dunedin in 1991 when my father was accepted to uh, Knox College uh, at the University of Otago. So that's where my journey started in Dunedin as a 10-year-old. So you're leaving the warmth of, uh, of Auckland to, to the old icy and snow in Dunedin. Yeah. So we, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a big uh, it's a big change both from a geographic perspective. Being um, I'm I'm very blessed to have spent a lot of time in Samoa, and uh, as you know, I uh, was very very gifted to be able to spend some time uh, deep in the Samoan culture in the 70s at, at university in Wellington in New Zealand, mm -hmm. where I was a housemate of a, a fine young woman uh, by the name of Naomi Mataafa, who is now the Prime Minister of Samoa. And uh, was was blessed to be able to spend time with her family back in those days, not knowing mm. where would she she would end up as the prime minister of the country. Um, <laughs> but yeah, deep deep south view, cold, uh, away from the centre of Polynesian immigration in Auckland. Um, yeah, how, how was that? How did that uh, affect you going down to the deep south on the way to Antarctica? <laughs> well, look, as, as 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 young people, we you know you you know well, as a ten year old, you know don't, you don't really think about these things. It was not till later on, as you're, as you're an adult, you saw, you know, uh, you you see the uh, decision making of my parents, and and also allowing me to, you know, to be in, a, in quite a uh, the privileged position to grab those opportunities that were there. So growing up in Dunedin, it was, it was just like anywhere anywhere else, really. Um, you know, uh, joined joined the local club, my local Lambo uh, Union Rugby Club, and then I played for them under twelves, under thirteens, and then. Um, 
went to Intermediate down there to Dunedin North Intermediate. And then I transitioned into uh, Logan Park High School uh, for a few years. And then I went to Tiger Boys High School. And, and that's where the seriousness of my rugby went another level when you're playing with uh, playing at a top high school. Cool. Then uh, you, you made the decision to, you played a, a few uh, clubs in New Zealand and then you headed off overseas. Tell us about that experience and, and what changes that brought to your life. Yeah, I think after a few years, I um, you know always had a the goal to to, you know, to make the All Blacks and as most um, you know and also to play at a high level. Um, so I always had goals and I set them really high. And I went through high school and I uh, didn't really make any 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 rep teams. And then one thing led to another. I left school and you know, I wasn't really known. I was sort of a wee bit, but not really on the radar. But it wasn't until I went to club rugby that. Uh, you know, I went to Lam- back to Lambert Union after high school. You know, we were just getting beaten every week by 60 points, 70 points, 80 points. But, you know, I didn't really, you know, didn't really care. I mean, because I wanted to just play for the jersey, you know, play my best. And then in that whole sort of um, the experience, I met up with um, Phil Young, who was the former Tago uh, coach, um, the Fords coach. And he kind of had a bit of a word with me and said, look, uh, we're, all, we're looking at you. So I thought, oh, wow, people are looking at me. So... And then 2000 was when I was selected for the Highlander Colts team, and then I trans- and then I made the New Zealand uh, under 21 team in 2000. So there's a, there's a few steps there. There's a few bit of a process because um, uh, people say, yeah, I went from high school and straight to Highlanders, and many many people don't understand. You know, uh, people are unaware of sports or maybe rugby union. There's there's different teams you have to make to to be in a certain position, uh, but also in that you have to perform as well, and perform at a, at a high level. Mm. So you then travelled overseas. You played, I think, in the UK and in France. Uh, you came back to New Zealand. Um, and current day, you've been the author of a book, which is being released pretty much as we speak, uh, in the current current uh, few weeks uh, when this is going to air. Um, tell us a little bit about, just briefly about the book. Um, we've done a book review with you um, but tell us about that and then tell us about the business that you're in now because you've made a decision to to lead and and coach and mentor others um, is this is this something that you, you've had inside you for a long time or is it something as part of that transition out of professional sports that you just felt you'd, you'd get into I always sort of uh, like like speaking, um, you know. As most things, I started quite young at, at church. Like our parents in the Samoan culture, we have a White Sunday, which is a celebration of children in the church, uh, children in Samoa. So at a young age, from three years old, way up to even as a, in your teenage years and even adult years, we are, you know, we are sort of uh, sort of pushed to <laughs> to learn verses and speak in front of uh, you know audience of three hundred to five hundred, even more. So I guess that that fear, you know, of public speaking has sort of sort of left me. But I'm always always quite nervous when I when I when I, when I speak, and 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 like and and I guess that's where that's where the whole when I transition into um, into the business world, I thought, okay, I, I really like speaking. How can I be like a like a Tony Tony Robbins, or how can I be like a Les Brown? You know, these great American uh, motivational speakers. So, and I went through the career. Uh, process transition and and I also wanted to have a start a school because I, I read this book in the UK called Outliers by um, by Malcolm Gladwell in around 2010-11 and I was coming back to New Zealand and thought wow they, they need these sort of uh, these partnership schools or charter schools so I came back they went here I worked in South Auckland for a bit and then I went to went to a charter school for about four years and then in 2018 that's when I, I took the leap that's it. I'm going to go start my, uh, my my speaking business, and then I think going through the process, I had a speaking coach. I had, I was able to understand, you know, um, you know, a bit of business, but more uh, understanding my IP, you know, my uh, the, uh, my intellectual property, what I had that could help others, because that's one thing I learned. It's not about you. It's it's about others. It's about who you helping to solve their problems. You know how how you're going to make it easy for them. Um, so yeah, so in that whole sort of process of, of change and understanding what it meant to be a speaker, you know, it's uh, sort of opened my 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 worldview to to how sports, uh, high performance sports, aligns with the business world. You know, with uh, with uh, accountability, with uh, with uh, transparency, effective communication, 
uh, and but also most importantly, more importantly, uh, our values. So values are really important. Mm. Oh, sure. Now you mentioned your book, and you've got a copy of it there. We can we can have a look at it because we want to let people know that they can go and <laughs> have a look at the book. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so that's my book, mate. So, so it's called Tackle Your Success. So seven truths of a professional athlete, sort of a step by step guide to a new life after sports. So pretty much a, a book written about my stories, uh, about others who've helped me, some successes, failures of what worked, what didn't. And I also write about values in here, quite a bit of values, which which pretty much drive me because those are the values instilled instilled in me by my parents as a um, you know as a Samoan. You know, um, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. Uh, this, you know, you're always Samoan, and you you and those and those values are instilled from in you as a, as a young person. So that's that's sort of pretty much um, written in, in, in the book about um, and the process I go through is using the tackle tackle acronym as an acronym to to write the chapters um okay. so i'll go through that and i explain what uh, about a bit of my stories playing in japan playing in england playing for samoa playing for the highlanders i mentioned coaches um and also you know many learnings and, and, and insights um you know uh, with uh, post post career mm. well it might seem obvious for you playing for a national team uh, about mm. some of the uh impacts that it might have on you um but you know, Samoan culture is extremely traditional. Um, it is a very strong culture in, in obviously in Samoa, but also in New Zealand. And we see this demonstrated by the passion with which uh, Polynesian teams, Fijians and the Tongans and and but uh, Samoans as well. So tell us about what impact and the learn the main learning you took from representing your country in such a very strong heritage mm. country as Samoa. I think one thing you learn is the the pride in the jersey, and also the passion, you know, the the power, <laughs> the, the 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 flair, the the talent, but also um, it's about serving. For many Pacific Island players, you go back to the islands, you, you you go back to serve the country. You go back to serve, honor your parents, your grandparents, to your village, to the community, and and. It's, it's something that uh, when you put the jersey on, it's, it's a different feeling from putting a Highlanders jersey on, from putting a Tasman Marcos, putting a Newcastle Falcons. It's it's really different because there's a three to five thousand year history of the Pacific, you know, a voyage, you know, across the across the Pacific Ocean, um, you know, with, with the navigators uh, finding Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, and all across the Pacific. You know, there's that essence of history. Of sort of of being proud for being you know the first ones to discover this vast ocean. Um, so the, so there's all that history, and but also uh, many people do not know much about the history between Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji, who had empires or kingdoms throughout the thou- two thousand years, and and all these kingdoms sort of sort of uh, intermingled with each other, you know, uh, and also uh, there's stories which are, are told through. Through songs, through through history, through through oratory, which is uh, some way as a spoken language, but also the history through the tattoos. So the history that's sort of a bit of a mark uh, for tattoos. So so the, the tatau, as it's called, that, that's a symbol of the journey. That that's a, that's a, a historical meaning for for Samoa. So it's a sense of pride of, of who you are, uh, not only for you but your family. So very different to other teams and many players you go to the Pacific Islands. Have to pay their way. Have to pay, um, pay, pay to go back to the islands, and if they, if they don't make the team, then you have to pay your way back. So you actually lose money when you go back. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so it is challenge. I mean, we're not, we're not, uh, we don't prioritize the 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 um, going back to pay for the money because we actually uh, it's it's different. It's a different um, different sort of value system in, in Samoa. Mm. I suppose one of the more famous exports from Samoa and New Zealand has been Sonny Bill Williams, uh, and of course his tattoos are, are well known. So, so the tattoos are actually telling the story of the, of the family tree and and the history of of the person and the family. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, the, the 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 story goes many hundreds hundreds of years ago. Uh, two women um, found that the found the uh, the, the tattoo kits uh, the the uh, the tattoo uh, kits in the bag. So these. They found it in Fiji, and they were given in the Fiji, and then they swam back. They swam back to Samoa, 
and then they went to um, to Savai, which is one of the big islands, and they went to a place called uh, Saipotu and and uh, in that area, and they went to go find one of the chiefs. Um, and then when they went to go find the chiefs, they they sang a song uh, that only women can, can be tattooed, not men. So when they went to so there's a woman. So and they went to go find the find the chiefs, and they they came across a big clam. A big clam was huge, and then they got scared, and then all of a sudden the whole song changed to now. Is it, so it's it's a it's a very famous song. It's uh, now so now it's it's uh, women uh, do not get tattooed, only men. So uh, it's quite interesting. Of it's but I pretty much uh, simplified that, but there's a big, big sort of bit of context behind it and a lot of uh, detail. So um, so that's so that's the ancient art of tattoo. So my family, the Lavere. Uh, the Lavea Levy side uh, were pretty much one of the, the main one of the main families in in the in that uh, the tattooing and the history of of Samoa and um, so Samoans used to tattoo the kings of Tonga because it was uh, it was it was, it was taboo to touch the the, the royal uh, kings of, of Tonga and their royal families and they used to come travel up to to American Samoa to or uh, and to places like that. So there's a, this is vast ancient history, uh, which um, you, you only can know by talking to, you know, um, someone, uh, uh, someone, people who've written books or uh, historians. Wow, that sounds like a whole interview in itself, but the history of tattoos <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the Pacific <laughs> Basin. My God. Hey, hey, really good. Hey, before we wrap up, uh, Philippe, I want to talk to you, just to get a couple of headliners from you about the work that you're doing with your speaking and your workshops that you're doing with corporates in New Zealand. Uh, dearly love to get you out and get you engaged in some of the executive coaching that we do as well in the future. Um, but t- talk to us about the main impact and the main sort of work that you're doing with corporates in New Zealand at the moment, your business. Yeah, so I deliver uh, some uh, leadership uh, programs. Um, so pretty much work with uh, middle management, management, uh, the likes of Fish and Paykel. Of um, so I'm working with also Mercury Energy, quite a big power company. Working with some of their management, uh, just a lot of uh, leadership values, uh, leadership uh, communication, working as a team, okay. and in sports, in the sports world, it's you know like I said before, you know, we are scrutinised daily, and uh, we are judged weekly on the results. Well, I think a lot of businesses are, are judged, you know, pretty quarterly, uh, yeah. annually. Yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, that's so. The impact I have is pretty much opening their worldview to teamwork, to communication, to actually face problems head on. Um, so I, I have a program called uh, the Facing the Hacker. So facing the hacker. So when I was captain for Samoa, I had I had to face the Olympics hacker. So I had to write about that. So what what was the process of me facing them? Because I only had ninety, pretty much no. Sorry, I had ninety percent of my team not available to face the All Blacks. So we we grabbed we grabbed anyone who's available around New Zealand around Samoa. So so imagine you know ninety percent of your staff not turning up to work. You know, oh. I, I had I had that problem. So I'm able to uh, articulate that and and for the for the challenges that businesses face, and and as a challenge as a leader, what do you do when you're faced with that, and, and how, how do you how do you ensure that your that your people, the well being of your players, or your of your staff, are, are, are well looked after in their well being aspect? Cool. Hey, uh, before we wrap up, one final point from you. We always ask our guests to to, to share some wisdom um, from their perspective of uh, let's let's say in your case for young entrepreneurs, um, whether they uh, be in business or. or social sphere mm. uh, what would be one tip that you would give to a young entrepreneur uh, in, New, in New Zealand or anywhere else for our audience at the moment I think um, one big thing is don't do it yourself <laughs> so <laughs> do, do not try to do it yourself uh, you know there are people there to help you uh, so I remember you know for the first few months I was you know a bit lost you know like oh my goodness what do I do how do I market how do I do sales uh, how do I, uh, you know, how to push out my products and, you know, going through this process. So but the big thing for me was was making sure that I see people in the industry who are more, who have more experience and follow their steps. So I was able to, able to have a speaking coach or, or a business coach. And, uh, and, and, and I, I was able to, um, to see their process because they're, they're, they've been in the game for, for many, many years. I was only just starting. I was, I was three, four months in. <laughs> so, so, like most things, as a as an athlete, you know, you go in there to learn, 
be open minded, have, have a growth mindset to always learn, and and to say that you don't you don't know everything. Uh, you're only an expert on probably one or two things, but these other other things you're not not good at. For me, it was accounting. Goodness me, I just just lost that one. So I made sure I got an accountant, um, uh, a designer, editor for the book. Um, so there's many other people so uh, to help you if you whatever you achieve in your business. Hey, hey great advice, and uh, thank you for sharing your journey with us. It's you've had a, a full life. You're still looking pretty young, Philippa. <laughs> so I think you've got a long way to oh. go yet. But <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we we really uh, really appreciate it, and uh, thanks so much. We we haven't talked today about your wife, who is also a change maker and a very strong woman, and has written her own book. And we're going to interview her as well, but uh, on a different day at a different time. <laughs> But thanks so much for sharing with us. Uh, really appreciate you um, giving us some insight into your personal journey uh, and your professional journey, as both as a sportsman and as a, a leader, as a Polynesian man in a in a very strong country with uh, with a lot of ties to professional sport, but also innovation and entrepreneurship, which New Zealand is known for. So thanks so much again. Uh, we really appreciate it. Down below, folks, um, the details. Just give us a bit of a heads up now where people can contact you and also get hold of the book, Philippe. Yeah, so the uh, you can go to um, tackleyoursuccess.com. So so that's the word. So tackle tackle tackleyoursuccess.com. Your, your um, go there and then you'll find the link to the book um, and go through the process. You can also, also connect on LinkedIn as well under Philippe Levy and uh, just say that you watched this uh, the, this chat with, uh, with Kim and uh and with myself, and uh, yeah, and provide any feedback if you can. <laughs> thanks, Philippe. I respect, and uh, thanks so much for giving us your time today. We we'll look forward to catching up with you in the future. No worries, man. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Kim. All the best.